So I'm Jamie Robinson. Nice to meet you. Jamie, uh, pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, my name's Jamie. I moved here from Canada, uh, started the Bitcoin hardware store with Ronnie, and I've uh, been teaching Bitcoin for a long time. Uh, in Canada, I used to run a Bitcoin business uh, from 2013 to 2018, and I onboarded about 90,000 of the early Canadians, uh, including BTC Sessions, bought his first Bitcoin from me, which I just found out. Um, and we didn't collect a lot of KYC information. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty basic. Uh, but I ran that website for a long time. It was a super easy way to buy small amounts of Bitcoin. So you discover Bitcoin you know, at some point in the evening. You say, hey, I want to buy 20 bucks worth. Uh, I don't want to send in my password. I don't want to do all this crazy stuff. I just need 20 bucks of Bitcoin to try it out. And our website, uh, quickpt.com, was, was sort of the go-to starting place in Canada. And so I ran that for 2013 to 2018, uh, took a bit of time off, and then came down to El Salvador. And now I'm onboarding more people here at the Bitcoin Hardware Store uh, with my team and uh, having lots of fun, lots of fun doing it. So. Man, absolutely phenomenal company that you've built here. Uh, out of everything I've seen in El Salvador, this is what I was most excited in. Thank I actually so came much. here and I drove by and I was like, it just blew my mind, but I was so hungry and I was like, I'm going to go get breakfast. Went down and got breakfast. I'm like, I'm sitting on my lap. I'm like, oh, they're probably open for like four or five, you know, and I just sit there eating. And then I, by the time I drove by, you guys are closed. And I was like, no, and it's tomorrow's Sunday. They're not going to be here. And then I was like, Pam, can you find them at the, at the, at the, at the Bitcoin event? And let me know if they're there. She's like, yeah, they're here. I'm like, all right, I'm coming. Yeah. So I came back there Sunday and I yeah. ended up linking up with you guys. So we're here. Um, we're at the Bitcoin hardware wallet store and I'm buying one of every single product that you have in your store, or at least. A decent amount of them. The good stuff. Everything that you guys are going to need to know to get started with Bitcoin from start to finish. And I think we're going to start off with the node. Yeah. So let's bring the node out. Totally. I'll have you introduce it. We'll kind of... Uh... Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Tell us what is a node for anybody that doesn't know what a node is. So a node is a computer, it's a regular computer that keeps a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and it relays new transactions to all the other nodes. So because Bitcoin is a leaderless system, there's no leader, nobody owns Bitcoin, nobody controls Bitcoin, um, there needs to be a, a network of computers that all are sharing all of the information, all the transactions that are happening, the, the current transactions, all the history of transactions. Um, and these computers store all of the information uh, in Bitcoin. And a full node, if you're running a full node at your house, you're being a, a full citizen of the Bitcoin network. Uh, you're keeping a copy of the entire Bitcoin transaction history. You're helping other nodes sync up as more nodes sort of join the network. Uh, and you can imagine the nodes, um, if you think about a bank, um, the bank is sort of the top node and it's an ancestry tree sort of coming down uh, from the top node. But in, a, in the Bitcoin network, uh, all the nodes are equal and it's like a web of, of, of nodes all around the world. Uh, everybody's equal. All the nodes help each other. If they need information, they can say, hey, I need information on this or I, you know, I got some corrupted data on that. Can you send me this again? And they all work together to stay in perfect sync. Uh, without a leader, which is really cool. And that's called a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network. Um, you know, you might have seen, um, you know, BitTorrent, the torrent network, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff back in the day. Uh, that was sort of a, a first attempt at that. And now the Bitcoin network uh, is, a, is a similar similar technology where you've got a bunch of computers all working together. Um, there are basic requests that can say, hey, I need this or I need that. Um, and when you run a full node at your house, like I said, you're a full citizen and you're keeping a, a copy of the entire blockchain at your house and helping to uh, contribute to the health of the network. Um, there's a bunch of benefits of running a node. First thing you should know is you don't get paid to run a node. Uh, so there's no monetary incentive to run a node. But if you're uh, a Bitcoiner, you uh, own Bitcoin, you use Bitcoin, you appreciate Bitcoin, um, you're invested in the health of the network. An unhealthy network is not a good thing for you. And you know you might want to say, you know what, I really care about Bitcoin. I like what this does. I like how it empowers me. I like how it empowers humanity. Um, I think I'm going to spend a couple hundred bucks and buy one of these computers. It's a standard computer. The one we sell here is 360 US dollars. Uh, it's a standard micro PC, um, and it sits you know just underneath your home router at home. It plugs into power. Doesn't use very much, and it plugs into. It's got a LAN port on the back, and it will. Um, uh, plug into your router into one of the four uh, router ports um, and it just sits there and runs completely automatically you don't once you set it up and configure it uh, you don't have to do anything it just sits there running away humming away um, accepting new transactions relaying new transactions accepting blocks and relaying blocks um, and and just being a healthy participant and um, you know when you run one you can sort of feel good about about um, helping the network and helping to decentralize the network uh, the worst case scenario for Bitcoin as time goes on is um, uh, you know only big companies and big banks are running nodes. Only the big boys run nodes, mm -hmm. and so it's really important that individuals run nodes out of their home um, to sort of decentralize that power and decentralize um, you know who gets to know about transactions and and who gets to know about new blocks. Um, you know there was a, a 
the block size war a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if you, if you mm -hmm. heard about Absolutely. it. Yeah, and so the, the block size war happened a few years ago, and the, the big sticking point of the block size war was, you know, if we increase the size, the throughput of Bitcoin, if we say we want to have, um, you know, blocks to be 100 megabytes or 500 megabytes, um, it would be way more difficult for home users to be able to keep an entire copy of the blockchain. Um, and so that was sort of central to the block size war was we want average people to be able to keep a copy of the blockchain, verify the blockchain, make sure that, that the transactions they believe are legitimate are legitimate because they can verify them themselves. Um, and you know, if you have large, large blocks like um, uh, some other financial experiments have, uh, you really can't run a node at your house. And so that's central to, um, to Bitcoin's decentralization and, and individualism. Talk to me about when you're the Lightning Network, you, do you need to have a node, your own node, to um, interact in the Lightning Network, or is this a different? Is there Lightning nodes and there's regular nodes? Can you... No. So this product here, uh, it's it's because it's powerful. It can run the Bitcoin software and it can run the Bitcoin Lightning software on the no same. No way. Node. So it's one product. You can also run a Nostr relay. Um, I also at home I run a contact server and a calendar server. So I don't use Google Contacts or Google Calendar anymore. I run my own uh, contact or calendar server on here. I go out for the day, I might add some more contacts. When I get home, everything syncs up. And so I can keep my contacts and calendar much more private rather than using Apple or Google. Um, and what's exciting is the, all the other features that are going to get added to these products as time goes on. Um, when you buy one from the Bitcoin hardware store, it comes blank. There's no software installed on it at all. Mm -hmm. um, but there's sort of three modes you can do. Mode number one is Umbral. You can install the Umbral software on here. Yep. And within that, there's a, a bunch of sort of check boxes. You can say, I want a Bitcoin node. I want a Bitcoin Lightning node. I want this. I want that. Um, there's all kinds of fun features. Uh, you can have media server, all, all kinds of stuff to dive into. And um, that's one, one option. The other option is the Embassy OS or Start9 software. Um, and that's a great one. That's one of the ones we recommend. We, well, I like the Start9. That's what I run at my house. Um, and again, same thing. It's got a, you, know, you, you fire it up and it's got a bunch of different options. It's just point and click. You just say, hey, I want Bitcoin. I want Lightning. I want Nostr. I want this. I want that. You know, you know, who doesn't want it all, right? So you just you run, you run a bunch. And, and this machine, uh, it's, a, it's got a two terabyte hard drive, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's got a Core i5 processor. So it's a, it's a decent machine and it can run all of this stuff simultaneously. You say um, two terabytes? Two terabyte hard drive. So the blockchain right now is about eight, 900 gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, so two terabytes will take you into the 2030s. Uh, you'll be good to go for, for, for a while uh, uh, with a two terabyte hard drive. And because Beautiful. you know the result of the uh, block size war or, or um, you know, discussion, was hey we want to keep blocks low, uh, on a smaller uh, scale. Um, so this device is still, still going to work, yep. and every every individual can still run a node at their home. Um, in the long term, I'd love to see home routers have nodes built into them. That would be super cool because then everybody would have a node at their house, and they wouldn't even realize it. It would just be built in. Uh, everybody would be running a node. Everybody would be contributing to the health of the Bitcoin network uh, because money matters to everybody. Um, that would be great, but we're we're a ways away from that, obviously. Uh, and so this is a great product. Uh, and it, it will do a, to answer your question. It will do a Bitcoin node and a Lightning node at at, um, at home. Now it is the, the third option. So you've got Embassy OS, you've got Start Nine, and the third option is just installing Linux on it. Okay. And so you can just <coughs> install Ubuntu Linux on this product, and you can uh, install the different programs at the command line, sort of MS DOS hacker style. You can say, okay, you know, install Bitcoin D, yep. install uh, Bitcoin Lightning, install Nostr. You can just install them uh, manually, and in that way, you get the most flexibility. Um, you can install whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, you're not limited to the choices and the checkboxes inside the umbrella of the Start9 software, but that way is way more complicated. You know, there's, there's way more to think about, way more to do, way more to maintain. Um, and so the, the, the two sort of point and click operating systems um, are, uh, are, are, are really great. Now, why do people say that if you want to truly remain anonymous on the Bitcoin blockchain, you need to be running your own node can you explain that? I, I don't. I can't wrap my head around totally. what that actually means. Yeah. So, when you run your own node, so I'll take a step back. When you use your phone, and you know you download Blue Wallet on your phone, or you download Blink, or you download Strike, or you download uh, Phoenix, mm -hmm. or or any software out there, whether it's custodial or non-custodial, um, your phone needs to know the status of the network. It needs to know. You know what? A, what recent blocks have come out? What recent transactions have come out? It needs to know about all the information that nodes are storing and relaying to other nodes yep. automatically. Um, and so your device is connecting to somebody else's node, yep. right? Yep. You're not connecting to your own node. You're connecting to some other guy's node, which is okay when you get started. And if you're a level zero, level one, level two Bitcoiner, that's probably how it's going to be for the first little bit, right? Yep. And that's that's realistic. 
Um, but the reality is, is that <clears throat> when you're connecting to somebody else's node, you're relying on them for truthful information, right? You don't actually know. So as an example, let's say we were doing a cash deal and I happened to run Blue Wallet and you were using Blue Wallet. Um, because your Blue Wallet is relying on my, my node and my software for information, you could see, oh, I have a pending transaction. Oh, I have a confirmed transaction. Everything looks good here. But your phone doesn't actually know that. It's relying on, a, on a somebody else's node, yeah. okay? And so when you run your own node, uh, and you pair your Blue Wallet, which you could totally do, your Phoenix Wallet, your uh, uh, various uh, s software wallets, mobile yeah. wallets, you can pair directly to your own node, you have a lot more confidence that the information you're seeing is truthful uh, without having to double check going to mempool or going to other blockchain.com, yeah. going to other websites and, and trying to uh, you know, double check that you actually got paid. And so when you run your own node, you're, you're much closer to truth mm -hmm. uh, because you're, you're getting that information directly from your node. But also, and more importantly, you're not sharing that information with other people. So as an example, let's say, you know, I gave you my, my Bitcoin address and I said, okay, I want you to, I want to, you know, I'm buying some Bitcoin from you and I'll yep. say, send the Bitcoin here. My blue wallet is connecting to, and I'm, I'm sorry to single blue yep. wallet. I love blue yep. wallet. It's our favorite wallet. I'm not saying yep. you're nefarious in any way. Uh, but, you know, my blue wallet app is connecting to the blue wallet node and saying, hey, could you tell me the balance of this address? So technically, their node could be recording that information and saying, hey, uh, we got this guy, this IP address, seem to be interested in this Bitcoin account number. And they can record that information and resell it, right? If you're using somebody else's node, they know which Bitcoin addresses you're interested in. Which Bitcoin, oh, I'm, I was checking the status of this transaction. Well, it's probably his transaction. Right? And, and all of that information is being shared with the node operator. And if they're just running standard node software, it's not recording that. Yeah. But uh, you don't know what software they're running. They could be running powerful analytical software that is uh, recording who's interested in what. If you go to blockchain.info and type in, <clears throat> you want to check the balance of a, of a transaction, you type in a, a Bitcoin account number, um, are they recording that information? We don't know. And, and uh, many blockchain explorers will state that they don't. Right, but how do you know that's true, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know there isn't an attacker in their office? There isn't something else going on. Mm -hmm. If you're using somebody else's node to get information about transaction histories, uh, confirmations. So, for example, mempool.space. Mempool.space. If when I connect to their site, I'm, they have their own node. That's yes. how they're displaying all of that information. 100%. So if I'm checking something on their site, yes. that, their node could be recording every one of could those, totally anything I'm doing. That information. Yeah, totally. And then they can actually sell that because and that it, is worth money. Act, it's incredibly valuable. Blockchain analytics is an incredibly valuable industry. Uh, there are, as you can imagine, tax authorities around the world very interested in who wants to know about what address. And so they're all, you know, they're very interested in that information and you know even when you use a website like mempool.space remember that you're <clears throat> accessing it as a website right so even if mempool is completely legit even if all of their staff is completely legit even if they're not sharing or selling that information at all your internet service provider is seeing that you're going to mempool.space slash address slash this address and so just merely the the uh, the communication between you and mempool.space could be being recorded. And so in terms of maintaining privacy, I always tell people one thing, that you really can't hide behind a keyboard indefinitely. So I, I would caution people, you know, if you're doing something nefarious, um, you can't hide behind a keyboard from the real serious authorities. Uh, none, you, know, none, if, no. you know, you, you can't. Um, and, and so caution yourself. But you can protect your privacy. You can have less governments involved less intermediaries involved and you can have respect for yourself and your data um, you know but having perfect unlimited privacy it is difficult um, but you know you can still say hey I just I don't want blue wallet knowing about my very private transaction history this, this is all my money yep. and I don't want another wallet software or another system knowing and, and having insight into how much money I have quite frankly uh, that's my own private business, uh, and maybe it's you know between me and my tax authority, and that's it. That's the only people that have the right to know, and, and depending on where you live in the world. Um, and so having these third-party companies, third-party analytical companies collecting that data is a problem. If you run your own node and you communicate it with it on Tor, the Tor network, the Onion network, uh, you can have your phone directly linked to your node, and whenever you want to check the status of, of your of your addresses, whenever you want to check any of that stuff, you're communicating directly with your node and it's extremely private. There's way less intermediaries involved in that. And because your node is collecting all of the information on the blockchain, right, it's not, no one can tell that your node is interested in this transaction or your node is interested in that transaction because you're interested in all of it, right? So there's no way to discriminate or, or discern which addresses you might control 
because um, all your note is keeping a copy of everything. And so that's the power of running your own. That's the, 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 the two main superpowers of running your own note is one, you're helping the Bitcoin network, which I certainly appreciate. And, and number two is you can access and retrieve information on the Bitcoin blockchain without anybody else getting involved or recording that. Uh, and so that's really, really powerful. Is there anything that we have not covered about this node that you'd like the audience to know or that you feel like we've left out? Anything that's important for a Bitcoiner to understand about a node that we didn't cover? You know, they don't use a lot of electricity. They're quiet. Uh, they're not mining Bitcoin. This device is not mining or using <clears throat> huge amounts of power or electricity. There's a lot of confusion between nodes and miners. They yep. are two separate devices. A node uh, is simply, it uses very little internet. Uh, it just, it's just uh, accepting new blocks, new transactions, and relaying them on to anybody who's interested. Um, and so it's, it's, it's very lightweight, uh, non-intrusive, uh, can sit next to your home router, and once you set it up, uh, generally it will just run and run and run. And so um, that's, that's the key. They're very low maintenance devices, very easy, uh, but the Bitcoin network very much appreciates um, the more nodes uh, on the network because it, it makes it harder to somehow you know, shut down Bitcoin. Yep. Uh, if we have nodes, if there's, I think there's 19,000 active visible nodes today. Uh, some nodes are not uh, visible, but, but there's 19,000 visible nodes today, and, and so you've got 19,000 computers to shut down, to, to turn off the Bitcoin network. And, and, and while you're doing that, there's going to be more popping up, you know? Yeah, one and more so, coming here next week. Right, and so thank you. And, and uh, so that's, that's, I think that's it for nodes. Perfect, now for our audience, somebody like myself has bought a my node. It was fairly easy for me to kind of plug and play. How much more difficult or how equivalent is this to something as simple as my node? Yeah, so with, with the products that we sell at the store, uh, there's nothing on the hard drive right now, so it's blank. Right. Now, we can pre-install Start9 for you. So when you go home, it's really easy. You literally just turn it on, plug it into your network, and, and Start9 has some very, very basic instructions for how to configure it. Uh, so we can do that for you, no problem. Um, Is that additional charge? No, no, we just, it's, it's no problem, it's fun. Sweet. Um, yeah, okay. the one thing, you'll need to provide a USB key, and we sell them for 12 bucks. Perfect. So you, you know, yep. that, that would be the one thing. Um, but. Um, uh, that's that's something we just do because we, we want to help the health of the network and it doesn't take us very long. Um, but one thing we do say is, hey, you know, you're running your own node. You're becoming a sovereign individual. You know, I'll sh I can show you the website and you should take a look and, and see if you think you can manage these instructions because uh, you should know how to do it. It's, it's not very difficult. Uh, all I'm going to do is download the Start9 software and put it on a USB key and just give it to you. And then when you first plug it in, you, you put the USB key into the back, yep. you connect it to your home network. Uh, and then it, it just fires right up, it turns on no screen, no keyboard required, it's called headless. Uh, so it, it, it will just join your, your local LAN network uh, and there's instructions for on your laptop, you open you up your laptop, it from your laptop and, and it, it, it's, it identifies itself on the network in a certain way and you can very, very easily get into it, start configuring it, it will restart and, and you're off to the races. Um, and so we can help you do it, but I'd also love for you to be able to do it yourself. Because uh, then, then you'll be empowered. And also if you want to, if you use Start9 and there's a feature you want, you say, mm, you know, I don't, I don't want Start9, I want to try Umbral. Yeah. And you know how to do it, you know? And you're, and you're totally empowered and you can empower other people. So the ripple effect um, is incredible. And so uh, that's the big difference with what we sell. What we sell is, is, is blank. There is a little bit of configuration. Um, for someone who just says, hey, I just want to help the network. Yep. I, just, I just want to help the network. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty. I'll say, no problem. Uh, I'll get you, I'll get it set up for you. Uh, but we, we like to empower people with the hardware store. And so, awesome. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right. There's no second best. Okay. It's not. It's not like Google and Facebook. It's not like Apple and Amazon. Yeah. We we, we can debate Apple or Amazon. What's better? They both look like tech monopolies to me. They both look pretty good. On the other end, Bitcoin or no Bitcoin. Bitcoin's crypto asset.